My Plus 4 had a problem with the 3 Plus 1 software built inside. It would not load when pressing the F1 key. After cleaning and resetting the microchips, it still failed to load. As it turned out the microchips containing the software needed replacing. In this video I will show you the steps I took to replace my 3 Plus 1 software. With these steps I was also able to burn the Diag 264 and make a diagnostic cartridge board. You can obtain the Diag 264 BIN file from inchox.co.uk, linked below. If you do not have a cartridge board to place microchips into, you can place the Diag 264 into the low ROM socket in the plus 4. To get some cartridge boards I ordered some from PCBWay. There is a project by Sukopera called OpenC16 Cart. Visit his GitHub and find the link to PCBWay, and download the gerbers. You will need those to order cartridge boards from PCBWay. With this board you can burn several programs to one microchip, and by rearranging some jumpers, decide which program is loaded. But to burn Diag 264, or the 3 plus 1 software to microchips, I needed an EPROM burner. I ended up ordering a Mini Pro TL866, which is cheap and widely used by the Commodore community. I also needed to download a driver for the Mini Pro dongle, and the program from their website. The LED will flash continually when the ROM driver is installed. So I had to make sure I had both the latest driver, and the latest program. Only then will the LED stop flashing, and stay on. On Amazon I ordered some STM27C512 chips. The number on the end, the 512, decides how much data can be burned to the microchip. 512 means you can burn 64K, which can be the equivalent of 416K programs. 256 means you can burn 32K of data. And a 27C128 chip means you could burn 16K of data. If you have four 16K programs burned to one chip and install it into an open C16 cardboard, you could then have four different games or programs load on your Commodore by changing the jumpers mentioned earlier. The programs or software, such as the Diag 264 or the 3 Plus 1 software, are programs you must download. If you want to burn these programs, you will need to obtain the BIN files for them. You can get many of the bin files for Commodores at Zimmers.net, linked below. Once I had the Mini Pro, the software and driver, and the microchips, I was ready to start burning. If you have the cartridge boards, with the capacitor, sockets, headers and jumpers, you can burn games and a Diag 264 to it as well. The 3 plus 1 software BIN, was a 16K file. But this microchip needs 64k of data. This meant I had to increase the size of the BIN file until it was 64k in size. But first I made a folder near the C folder, and renamed the BINs to something smaller. So it was easier to type out the command in DOSBox. Using DOSBox, I can double the size of the BIN file by using a command that will add the file to itself, which doubles it in size. The command is copy, slash b, name of the BIN file, plus, the same name of the BIN file, followed by a new name of a new BIN file. With a simple command I was able to double the BIN file until it was 32k. Then I went on to double it again to 64k. Now I had two 64K versions of the 3 plus 1 low and high ROMs. The next step was to burn them to the chips using the Mini Pro EPROM burner. Each chip has a notch indicating which side of the chip is pin 1. You will see the notch at the side. It must be placed in the EPROM tray with the chip toward the handle that opens and closes the tray. After I placed the chip correctly into the Mini Pro tray, and locking it in, I opened the program. First thing I did was select which microchip I was using. In my case an ST brand, and an M27C512. If you don't see your brand of chip you will have to find out which one is compatible, and untick the check ID. The next thing I did was blank check the chip. 
Do not read the chip as I heard it could add data to the chip prematurely. Blank checking is to make sure China didn't send you one with data still on it. I got an OK. Next I loaded my first 64BIN file, the low ROM version, to burn to the chip I presently had in the EPROM. File. Open. Then navigate to the BIN file. The window told me that it was a binary file. I clicked OK. I could see in the left window the file had been loaded. Now it was time to burn. I clicked on device and program. When the window popped up I clicked program. Afterward I verified if the burn was successful. That was it. Next I took out the new ROM chip and set it aside. Getting out another chip I placed it in the mini pro tray. Locked it into place, loaded and burned the high ROM. Simply repeating the same steps. Once each chip was burned I placed a label over the tiny window in the center of the chip. This is to prevent the chip from being erased by the sun. It would take several days of direct sunlight to erase a chip. The usual method of erasing these chips is to make a tiny mirror reflecting box that has a UV bulb installed. Don't stare at the UV bulb or you'll go blind. To prevent accidental loss of data on the chip, place a label or sticker over the tiny window. Afterward I set them into the sockets, on the Commodore Plus 4's board, where the old chips used to be. Using these steps I was able to burn Diag 264 into a chip. Also was able to combine four different games onto one chip. Using the OpenC16 cartridge board I was able to choose which game would load by changing the headers. If you liked this video please like, comment, and subscribe for more retro computer videos. I am Commodore Owl 27. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.